Have you ever made a charcuterie board for a gathering and your board was just way too small? That happens to me a lot. So what I decided to do was make my own. So instead of like one of those little teeny tiny overpriced ones that you can buy at like a Williams Sonoma or a Crate and Barrel, you could make something that's huge, like this one. I'm gonna show you how to make this gigantic beauty for about $10 and no special woodworking skills. So to start, you'll need a one by eight board and a one by three board. I just used a simple inexpensive pine common board and I like that personally because it gives a really nice rustic look. So from those boards, I want you to cut the one by three to a length of 30.5 inches. And I want you to cut two lengths from the one by eight board to 26 inches. Now, obviously you can adjust these measurements to get the size board that you want, but this is a, a pretty solid size to fit um, a spread that's gonna feed around like eight to 10 people generously. Have I mentioned this also looks super, super cute on the counter? It really does. Arrange your boards, like do a dry fit, just to make sure that you like where all the different knots and the whorls and all of those are kind of like lining up together. It's not super important, but it just makes for a more aesthetic final product. I want you to put a nice generous coating of waterproof wood glue on the long edges and just kind of smoosh them together. And then, <laughs> smoosh them together. Get those set up and then clamp them and leave them to dry overnight and it will create a really, really secure bond. Once those have dried, you can unclamp them and then you're gonna go on to sanding. Now this is the make or break point for any woodworking project in my opinion. You really wanna go through all those levels of sanding and don't skip. If you skip from a 60 grit to a 180 grit, you're going to have flaws and scratches in that finish and you really don't want that. So just do it right, do it well, and it's a flat surface, it's not gonna take as long as you think. I want you to go through a 60 grit sand, then 80, 120, 180, then 220. After you do that, this is gonna be smooth as a baby's tush. Now, during the 60 grit step and the 220 grit step, take your sander and sort of round off those edges. Really, you can be very, um, very rustic and organic with this. You know, we want to get that vintage look so it does not have to be this perfect curve. You just want to kind of knock down those square edges and give like a really sort of time-worn appearance. In this specific case, doing it from a 60 to a 220 doesn't really matter that much. All right, everything is sanded, it's looking fabulous. Now we're gonna move on to a slightly unconventional technique that I think is pretty ingenious. So in order to do a food safe stain, which you can achieve with a commercial product, however, it takes a very long time to cure. And you know, I don't wanna wait a month to use my new fabulous like serving board. So what I came up with is a coffee paste in order to stain your board. You're going to take a cup of coffee grounds, not used fresh coffee grounds. Um, do like two, two to three like really generous scoops, like a tablespoons full. So I'd say it's probably about four to five actual measured tablespoons and just wet it with some water in order to create sort of um, a, a, a grainy paste. And then you're just going to dump it on the board and smear it on every surface of this board. Just rub it in with your hands, really get in there. Your hands are gonna be beautifully exfoliated by the end of this, which is a little strange. <laughs> They're very smooth. All right, if that coffee stain technique blew your mind too, hit the like button. More people need to know about this. And when you hit the like button on a video like this, it spreads to more people. I just want more people to do this. It's just so cool. First, you'll do one side, then the other side and let each side sit for 15 minutes in that sort of like that coffee ground mixture. And then after 15 minutes, it'll be a little, it'll be pretty dry. So you can just wipe it away with a paper towel. You're gonna wanna bust out the vacuum because obviously there's gonna be coffee grounds like all around your work surface. It's a, it's a pretty easy cleanup. All right, now your board is stained a really lovely aged light natural brown color. And we're gonna just take it up one more level and protect the surface of the wood by doing a generous coat of butcher block conditioner. And if you don't know what that is, I'll leave a link in the description below. 
Um, but what it is, it's like a mixture of food grade mineral oil and beeswax. And what it does is it, it soaks into the wood and creates sort of a, a water resistant barrier. And this is gonna be key in protecting the health and the lifespan of your board. And this is the type of product you'll want to reapply every few months. So do a generous squirt of that and then rub it in with a nice clean lint free cloth and let it sit overnight. And you're gonna be surprised by how much of this stuff that the wood is gonna soak in. In the morning, you can buff it up with um, another clean rag. You might not even have to because it's all been soaked in, but if it's still like a little, not sticky, but a, li a little tacky, no, what is the right adjective here? Anyway, if you can kind of still feel it on the surface, buff it up with another clean cloth. And hot tip, save the first cloth that you used in a Ziploc bag, um, cause then you can just reuse it over and over again. While this is perfectly food safe, I would still recommend putting down a layer of parchment paper whenever you do sort of any sort of spread on here, um, unless it's like a super dry food, like crackers or bread or whatever. The reason being, it just makes for a way easier cleanup. You could absolutely serve right off this board, but you know, think about this. This is unsealed pine. So if you did like a raw, like a strawberry directly on this board, it's gonna stain. It's just, that is what it is. It's a natural material. It's gonna stain, it's porous. So I would always use the parchment paper. Nothing bad's gonna happen if you don't, except that you might stain your board. And maybe you want that. Maybe you want that little extra level of patina. You do you, live your life. I hope you enjoyed this easy project. And if you're looking for another easy project that would look amazing in your kitchen, check out this video.